Hey guys, we're ready to begin week three in our study of the book of Ephesians. This week, we're gonna cover all of chapter three. Today's video is just gonna cover verses one through 14. So if you haven't read that, that section of scripture, I invite you to do that right now. You can turn the video off and you can read and uh, circle things and ask questions. Once again, I'm just here to walk beside you. So if you're not ready for the teaching portion, if there's still things that you're wrestling through, then just keep spending time reading those verses on your own. And then you can always go back to the videos. And so today in chapter three, uh, Paul's going to pick up and Paul's going to remind them of two things. He's going to reveal the mystery, which really had been hidden until God brought it to, to the perfect time, which is now, and in, in, after the church had begun in the book of Acts, to, to be revealed so that everybody would understand that if you're in faith, it didn't, if you had faith in Christ, it didn't matter if you were Jewish or a Gentile. And that was a mystery revealed because all throughout the Old Testament, the, the religious systems and everything primarily was to the Jews. And so this really would have been controversial and hard for so many uh, people to understand. And so it really was a mystery that God chose to, chose to really open up and reveal. And then also, Paul is going to really talk to us about his ministry. And really, he is the most unlikely minister to the Gentile believers because he had been a Jew among the Jews. So there's just so much richness in, in this passage. Um, the, another fun fact to realize is that verse 1 in chapter 3 is like, you know, the beginning, the intro, and then verses 2 through 13 are really would have been in parentheses that, got, that Paul would have really been explaining some things in between there. And then he's going to pick up the thought that he started in verse 1 when he gets to verse 14. So if you're ready to dive in, we're going to pick up in chapter 3. And this is what verse 1 says. For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for the sake of you, Gentiles, if indeed you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace, which was given to me for you, that by revelation there was made known to me the mystery as I wrote before in brief. But referring to this, when you read, you can understand my insight into the mystery of Christ which in other generations was not made known to the sons of men as it is now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets in the spirit. And so Paul introduces himself and reminds them that he is a prisoner of Christ Jesus. And you know, he's also physically in prison here in Rome. And then he stops there and he starts to kind of clarify that 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 there has always been this mystery somewhat that that now God has chosen to reveal to 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 us and to Paul, but specifically to those believers, and that Paul's ministry was going to be to the Gentiles, which once again Again, is that he's the most unlikely person because if you go back into Acts when Paul was still Saul he was a persecutor of the church that Paul had grown up and, and hit all the boxes checked all the Jewish boxes kept all the rituals kept all the laws gone through all the schools so Paul I mean Saul really was a, a Jew among the Jews and now after his conversion on the road to Damascus this is who God chose to be the minister to the Gentiles. Because once again, there would have been a time where, where the Orthodox Jews of that day really considered the Gentiles on the same level as dogs. Once again, this is, these, are, these are big um, divides that was between the Jewish people and the Gentile people at the time. And so the mystery that, that God reveals here is so interesting. And the minister being Paul is even more, more astounding, which once again, we know from scripture that this is how God works. He picks the most unlikely person, maybe the weakest, maybe the, the once again, he picked the fishermen and the tax collectors. And now he's picked Saul, you know, who is now Paul, to be the minister to the people that he would have hated. And so that's what that's part of what the mystery is. 
And that's part of what Paul's ministry is going to end up being, which he reveals to us here. But then look at the mystery uh, revealed in verse 6. It says, to be specific. So Paul's just going to lay it out here. And once again, when it says mystery, it doesn't mean something eerie or something scary or anything like that. But it, it rather means, Warren Risby said it this way, a truth that had been kind of hidden all throughout the Old Testament, but now revealed in, in, in the church age. And so it says there, this is, this is Paul kind of laying out what the mystery was. He said, to be specific, that the Gentiles are fellow heirs and fellow members of the body and fellow partakers of the promise in Christ through the gospel of which I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace grace, which was given to me according to the working of his power. And so he tells them, he said, the mystery is, is it's not like there's these levels, not like there's Jewish believers, the, 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 the Jewish people that had converted to Christianity that realized that Jesus was the Messiah. It wasn't like they were here and the Gentiles that had believed in Christ were down here. He's saying that it's it's an even playing field. Once again, at the foot of the cross, so we're all at the same place. It doesn't matter if you were a Jew. It doesn't matter if you're a Gentile. It doesn't matter if you're a man. It doesn't matter if you're a woman. It doesn't matter your race. It doesn't matter any of those things that we're all at the same place. And this would have been shocking, especially to the Jews, because once again, they had been God's chosen people. That's who God had done all the things on the earth through, primarily through that group of people. So now, with Paul saying, and once again, this would have been hard for Paul to understand, you know, because Paul had lived that life of a devout Jew. And so now he's telling them, he's revealing this mystery that we're all fellow heirs. It didn't matter if you were Jew or Gentile. We're all fellow heirs. We're all fellow partakers because we're in Christ. And then Paul says, and not only that, this is my ministry now. This is, this is who I'm going to minister to is the Gentiles. And he said, not according to anything I've done. Once again, he was the most unlikely candidate. But it says, because it was given to me through God's grace and through the working of his power. And, you know, it's so important to remember that, that all ministry, you know, Paul is telling us here about his, but all ministry has to be from God's grace and by his power. Otherwise, we know there is no fruit. There is no fruit in it. And then Paul goes on and he says, to me, the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unfathomable riches of Christ. And so he, he, he humbles himself. You know, Paul continued to stay humble. You know, we also know that, that he had a thorn in his flesh that God wouldn't take away to keep him humble. So once again, Paul always referred to himself uh, as, as the least. And you know that once again, Paul knew like, I'm the least likely person to take the message to the Gentiles. But that's who God chose. He chose him. And it says he was to preach to the Gentiles the unfathomable riches of Christ. And once again, these are spiritual riches. This might not, this is not talking about earthly blessings, even though you are blessed through following Christ and through 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 uh, growing in him. Like I said, there's tons of blessings. There's tons of mercy. There's tons of grace. But he says, you know, the spiritual blessings, once again, we have all that we need. And so it says it's unfathomable, the riches that we have in Christ. Once again, we're not spiritual paupers. We're not spiritually bankrupt ever. Even when Paul was in prison, he wasn't spiritually bankrupt. His ministry continued. Why? Because it wasn't from his power. It was from God's power. So even when we might be in a really bad place, God is still working. Your ministry might even grow more and your faith in him will definitely grow more because once again, you have the access to all the spiritual blessings that you need. And then it says, and to bring light to what is the administration of the mystery for from the ages that has been hidden in God who created all things. Once again, you know, it, in the Old Testament, everything was primarily for the Jews. And, and I, I love this quote. It says, the calling of Israel was primarily, mostly to temporal blessings in earthly places. You know, all the Old Testament is about that. Now, don't get me wrong. There's, there's promises, eternal promises in there. But a lot of it was about 
God setting up his people here on the earth and, you know, that he would protect them and provide for them, all those things. But this, this commentator says the church's spiritual blessings are in heavenly places. And once again, that's what Paul's trying to reveal to us, that we're not spiritually poor, that we have access to all of it. And it says, so that the manifold wisdom of God might be made known through the church to the rulers and authorities in heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose which was carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and confident access through faith in him. And so we need to remember that, once again, that this is spiritual blessings. That if you don't learn anything out of Ephesians, I want you to learn that, that really everything is spiritual. Don't be afraid of that word. But just always keep everything that you know about spiritual things rooted in Scripture. Like I said, it's not silly. It's not emotional. It's not something that we should be afraid of because that's what's keeping us paupers, that we need to remember that we are spiritually rich in Christ and that we're at the same level as everyone else at the foot of the cross and that we can be bold and confident because our faith is in Him and the power comes from Him and the grace comes from Him. So we have access and it's unfathomable the riches that we have in Christ. I want to end today with this, this kind of how Warren Wiersbe summed up some of this in these first few verses. It says, This great truth concerning the church is not a divine afterthought. It is a part of God's eternal purpose in Christ. To ignore this truth is to sin against the Father who planned it, the Son whose death made it possible, and the Spirit who today seeks to work in our lives to accomplish what God has planned. When you understand this truth, it gives you great confidence in your faith. And when you know what God is doing in the world and you work with Him, you can be sure that He will work in you and for you. And so let's not be afraid of these spiritual blessings. Let's not, let's not be afraid of this access that we've been given. But let's be bold and realize that really His grace and His mercy and His riches are unfathomable.